Hello all and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today in this particular video, we are going to talk about a model called GLIP. So GLIP is a model that is used for object action by using text prompts and it has been developed by Microsoft. So till now we all have been using supervised models for object actions like Euro V5, Euro V7, Mask RCNN, Faster RCNN and so on. But those are supervised learning models. So that means you need labels for training those kind of models or fine tuning those kind of models. But in real time scenario, we don't have flexibility to annotate a large set of images for training such kind of model. And that becomes a very difficult task to produce any kind of state of art uh, orbit action models. So here GLIP help us to train a self supervised uh, model. That means you, do, you don't need a labeled data set. Uh, you can use labeled data set along with uh, unlabeled data set. But uh, the main purpose of this model was to do the self supervised training. That means you don't need a labeled data set. You just need an image and its caption which which is uh, which states that that's that particular object present in a in an image so that means a text and an image should correlate each other and text should talk about the object present inside an image so that's a capacity or that's a capability of a particular glip model to learn that kind of uh, correlation between that text and the image in a particular uh, object and to help to understand and identify the objects better so the GLIP model uses self-supervised way of learning text and image to produce and bond uh, bonding box information out of it. So it is all being done with just an uh, just an image and a text, and you're going to pass an um, the object that you want to extract from from a particular image, and then a GLIP model will give you a prediction of bonding boxes. So how good it is? You don't have to train a particular supervised model. You just have to pass a particular uh, prompt or an object information uh, with an image and it will help you to plot and bonding box information without even training a uh, supervised model without even labeled data set so uh, before we go into the demo part let's just go through this particular uh, github uh, that microsoft had provided for this particular GIF model so if you go into this particular uh, github you're going to see a lot of uh, discussion has been done uh, regarding the training of the model and what are the data set that they have used for training it you can see they are, they are, they are able to achieve uh, good information uh, from the data set that is they are able to produce good accuracy on the test data set uh, knowing that it doesn't need a lot of labeled data set to be trained right and you can use this uh, uh, github repo to install it on your uh, local uh, laptop or local settings and then you can uh, reproduce these codes uh, to get the prediction done on your uh, laptops right and you can see the lot of models that has been trained on this so if you see there are like four models and uh, one is tiny another one is also tiny uh, third one is also tiny and then there's a large model that has a lot of parameters and it has been trained on uh, these kind of data sets so these models are uh, were trained on 27 million images with their all text and images configurations and it was trained uh, with such huge data set so that they can understand the object better from the images. So you can use such kind of models to auto annotate your data set for certain images and then you can uh, fine tune your uh, models based on the annotation that you got from such kind of models using the supervised models like Euro V5 or Euro V7. So this is the way where a GLIP model or any such kind of self-supervised based model can be helpful for you. Going further down, you can see there are also pre-training methods that you can use and you can install it on your locals and you can start doing it. And there are also uh, things that you can use and train it and fine tune it. So you can see this is our set of code that you can use it to prepare your own data set. And then you can fine tune your model based on the information that has been provided in the GitHub. Right. So now let's jump to the demo part of this uh, uh, GLIP model. So on the hugging phase, they have provided a, a model uh, called a clip and then you can pass that particular image so i have passed one image and let's suppose i want to extract a t-shirt or, or, or should i say i should identify the object t-shirt from this particular image so i'm going to pass an object name t-shirt and i have passed this particular image over to this model and then i'm going to submit this 
So as, as soon as I submit it, it's going to plot a bonding box information around it with a confidence level. So you can see on this particular image, you can see a green bondy box has been plotted around the t-shirt and the uh, confidence level also has been produced. So likewise, uh, I can also uh, try on extracting or plotting a bonding box around the sunglasses. So let's see how it goes. And you may surprise that it is able to do that thing very, very accurately. So you are able to see that, right? You can see that green bonding box is around the sunglasses with 85% confidence level. So this is the beauty of this particular glyph model. It is able to build a, a confidence score based on the text prompt that you're passing with an image. So that's the beauty. Without even training a supervised model, you can leverage such kind of information or such kind of uh, uh, detections from, an, from a particular image. And then you can use it for your purpose on the uh, downstream task, right? So this is the uh, capacity or capability of a particular uh, self-supervised learning model based out of text prompts. So now let's suppose if you want to do this um, using the code. So Microsoft has provided the demo, uh, demo notebook. So you can go through those uh, GitHub and you can understand or you can launch the demo notebooks from there. So I have already launched their notebooks. And I, only, I have already installed this information that they require, like all the dependencies that they are required to work with this kind of model. So it takes few minutes to install it. And I'm trying to skip that because it already took me like 15 minutes to install. So I'm skipping that part. And here are the few dependent dependencies that they're gonna uh, make up. Like they're gonna define a function to load an image and to show up an image, like to print an image over there. So this is the dependency they're gonna print up over here. And then you can download the model. So as I discussed, right, there are plenty of models are available on the GitHub. So they are downloading the tiny model, uh, Glyph tiny model. So we are also going to do that. You can also download the a large model of a Glyph and you can start doing the inferencing part as I'm, as I'm going to show you right here. Right, so for this purpose, you're going to download the, uh, the Glyph tiny model and it will take few minutes to download it. You can see it's a 3.5 GB model. It's not very, uh, a small model it's also very uh, expensive model so once the downloading has been done what you can do is you can import the glyph uh, demo from their uh, github uh, so once you install this kind of dependencies so it's gonna it's gonna uh, clone the github from their github repository and you can directly import the glyph demo from their github and then you can pass the configuration files that are being given here in this particular code and then you can uh, pass the minimum size of a particular page and then you can also pass the confidence threshold. So let's suppose uh, the confidence threshold greater than 70% uh, will be marked uh, and it will skip all the uh, threshold or bounding box below this uh, confidence level, right? So this is the uh, setting that you can pass it and then you can set up this uh, demo over here. And once this model loading and the demo is prepared, you can start passing your image and also the uh, objects that you want to extract from this particular image. So I'm going to use an image uh, from the dataset. So this is the image uh, that I'm going to use it for the demo. And you can see this is a lot of complicated image. It has a lot of uh, objects in this particular image. So we are going to uh, extract this baubles, which are, which are present at the top of the shelf. And we are going to extract these two things. Uh, that is the self and the baubles uh, that are present at the top. That is, these are toys that are present. So we're going to mark those or annotate those uh, uh, objects that are, that are present over the shelf. So we're going to pass that prompt according to the objects that you, that you want to extract from that particular image, right? So the caption would be, or the text would be with this particular image is uh, bobble heads on the top of the shelf. So this is what we want to extract, the bobble heads on the top of the shelf. So what will it, what the model will do, it will read this prompts and it will also load up this image and then it's gonna help us to mark or detect those objects that you are going to that we have passed on this particular uh, caption right so this is what it's gonna do so let's just run this and let's see the predictions that's how it's gonna help us to uh, mark those objects uh, around this particular images and then also help us to see the confidence level so you can see the model is able to pretty much identify the objects in the particular image uh, by using this prompt so you can see it has identified the bobble heads you can see the class is also being de defined because it has uh, literally focused on the uh, bobble head word 
uh, that is uh, targeted and then also focus on the shelf word you can see it's not just the shelf it's also see, uh, you can also see the word the shelf so the class it had, it has identified it it as the shelf and with the confidence bonding confidence information right so this is what you can do it so let's suppose you want to extract this uh, bonding box information like what are the coordinates and all then what you can do is you can just uh, get the top predictions so once you pass this particular images and caption inside this glib demo model that we defined above so you're going to get a results and the top predictions so in the top predictions you're going to get this get fields and you have to pass the labels in the get fields so you're going to get the labels uh, in the form of the entities that you're looking forward so you go, if, you, if you want to see the uh, top predictions uh, that is the bonding box information you can see the bonding box information from this top predictions and also the entities that the model has looked into so you can see uh, the the model has looked into the bobble heads the top and the shelf from the caption so you can see in the caption we had bobble head on the top of the shelf so it has identified that what is the focus that um, that the model has to make up so it has identified the three entities from this particular caption bobble heads top and the shelf and based out of that it is able to plot the uh, based, based out of that context, it is able to plot the bonding boss information over the image. So how cool it is to get get the uh, annotation for this particular image with the relevant objects that you need, right? And then you can uh, with this with this bonding box information, you can crop this particular objects from this image and you can use it for your own purpose that you require, right? Let's see one more uh, uh, information. So let's suppose uh, you want to uh, get multiple objects from this particular image so let's say the tv car remote whatever the image you can see the plants and the sofa uh, so there are a lot of objects present in this particular image right so what what if you want to extract the uh, multiple objects from this particular image so what you can do is in the prompt you can start passing the names of the objects that you want to extract with comma separated or you can use a uh, full stop separated uh, object names right so in the caption, you have to pass the information in such a way that these particular object names are separated by the full stop or the comma. And then you can pass the image that you're looking forward and the caption into the model with the confidence level. And then you're going to print this particular uh, predictions by using the top predictions as I shown you. But let's see how the model is able to detect such kind of uh, objects from this particular image so you can see the model is able to pretty much get the uh, right things on the right spot from a particular image given the particular information from this uh, uh, text so you can see there is no sky present in this particular image so it's not able to detect it there's no plane uh, but it is able to detect the remote dog i think there is also no dog present in the particular image but you can see it is able to get the remote with a 0.59 confidence level and it is also able to get it so far also and at the top, it is able to identify the person with very less competence. Obviously, it is, I think it's very wrong, but it, we can filter out those uh, wrong detection based out of the confidence level, right? So this is the thing. Uh, you can do it pretty much by giving a prompt without even training a supervised model like Hello V5 or Hello V7. So the main takeaway from this particular uh, video would be to use this kind of uh, glib models or self-supervised models to annotate your um, images, take uh, those annotated images or train a supervised uh, models like Euro V5 or Euro V7. So since you, if you don't have much of time to annotate uh, your data set, you can use such kind of models. And let's say if you don't have such complex task, then you can use glib model to annotate objects uh, for easier tasks. So if you have, if you, if you like, if you want to extract uh, objects from this particular images like uh, IC channels or uh, uh, integrated circuit boards. So I think the model will not be able to produce much good results. But obviously what you can do is you can use uh, these kind of uh, glip models to at least get the area or region of interest where you're looking forward of over that particular uh, integrated circuit board. And then uh, once you have those kind of images extracted from the, by the glip model, then you can use yellow v5 model to or v, v, yellow v7 model to train uh, custom uh, supervised models right based out of the annotation what glip model has produced so this is uh, uh, all about this particular video 
hope you like this and if you like the content please do subscribe the channel thank you